similar to 2.8, 9.1 now, instead of doing one interval notation, instead of just do one interval notation, now we have a compound inequality. And the compound inequality just basically tell you that instead of just do one interval, we will do two of them. And when you see this problem right here that on your screen, it basically tell you that you need to do one on the left side and one on the right side, okay? And there are two type of compound inequality that we were dealing with, which is we deal with the word and, and we deal with the word all. The word and basically tell you that we are looking for the overlapping. We are looking for the intersection. We are looking for a number. Basically, this is the question right here. If you look at this question, they basically ask you this, ladies and gentlemen. Pick me a number for X. Same idea, same goal before. Pick me a number for X when I plug it in here, I add it to five, I multiply to four, and that number is bigger than zero, but smaller than eight, okay? So pick me a number that is overlap. I need to find a number that is bigger than zero, but less than eight. Meaning the only thing that is, that bigger than zero but less than a is the overlapping which is you can see if that were to be a question then we can pick you no know, one two three four five anything that less than a but bigger than zero all right but this is the concept that we want you to see that whenever we deal with the word and basically we deal with the intersection which is we're looking for just the overlapping region we're looking for the again this you will see this notation when you get to 120 this is the intersection notation is basically find a number that overlap of a and b together okay so let's take a look at this particular problem that we do with here so you will see this particular problem a lot this particular problem that you will see and and um and um when you look at this problem, do not freak out, right? So if you were to copy this item down, if you were to copy this on your, on your, uh, on your notebook, this is what you need to do is, I tell my student, just draw a box in the middle. Your objective, your goal, whatever you need to do is you need to solve X. That's the first thing, right? You need to get X by itself. Whatever you do in the middle, all you need to do is do on the left and do it to the right side. So basically you move everything from the middle. Do not move them from the left side to the right side. This is a little bit different before, which is your goal is to get everything in the center away from the center. And to get it away from the center, you need to do the opposite operation. The only thing new or the only thing different is whatever we do in the middle, we need to do it on both sides. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing here. And again, if you uh, were not able to copy it down, I will write the problem again. And then when we do it, you will see uh, those problem again. Uh, so if you see this problem A, this is what we have or oh, this is what I give you guys, which is negative 18 less than or equal to 3x, less than minus 12, less than or equal to 36. Again, just think in terms of this thing here, draw yourself a box. For me, this is what I do is I draw myself a box and I say, I need to move everything, every number I see in this box away from this box. And looking at this thing here, as always, we want to get rid of the subtraction first. And to get rid of the subtraction, do you agree that we need to add? And if I add in the center, this is all you need to do is you need to add to the left and you need to add to the right. I, you need to add to the left and the right. So basically whatever we do in the center, everybody see that whatever we do in the center, we do it on both sides. So the middle goal, 
the middle, this is what I have left because the 12 and a negative 12, they disappear. I have this item and this item. Everybody see that my 12 disappear. And now a negative 18 and a positive 12, this thing will give me negative six. 36 and a 12, that thing will give me 48. So this is all that you need to do is whatever in the middle, draw yourself a box in the middle, whatever in the middle, your goal is to get rid of those items. And to get rid of those items now, what do I need to do here? Same thing, go, my X is not by itself. I still have some number lingering around my X. And to get rid of this number, I divide it by three. If I divide by three in the center, I need to divide by three to the left. I need to divide by three to the right. So basically the compound inequality just tell you that whatever we do in the middle, you need to do it on both sides. And ladies and gentlemen, I did not switch my inequality. The reason is I divide just three. I did not divide by a negative three, right? So my inequality stay input, stay the same. So in this case, do you agree that three going to negative six will give me a negative two? Three going to this thing here will give me uh, 16. Agree? So this is a, a, a little bit better. Hopefully you guys will see that this here, the inequality is this. We are done, right? My X is by itself. Everybody see that? My X is by itself. We got to check. So this is what we have is we're looking for a number for X. Tell me what number for X that we're looking for that is bigger than negative two, but smaller than 16. Do you agree that? So when I graph this, for me, this is all I need to do. All this is what I want you guys to do is identify your endpoint. And in this case, everybody see my endpoint is a smaller number on the left, which is negative two, and a bigger number on the right, which is 16. And do you agree that this group of number right here, whatever this group of number is, this group of number, let's say negative one, zero, one, two, all the way to 10, whatever, any number on the between, any number inside here is the number that is bigger than negative two, but smaller than 16. Agree? Which is now looking at this item, do you see that we have this bracket? Why do I have a bracket? Because of this equal sign. So for a compound, for a compound inequality for the N symbolic, for the compound inequality, this is what you need to do is we can graph this item here in the sense all you do is you all you do is you just shade the number in between the two endpoints. Because of the N, because of the N is basically we're looking for the overlapping. We're looking for some number that is bigger than negative two, but smaller than 16. As you can see, I cannot choose 18 here. Why I cannot choose 18 here? Because 18, I know, I agree that 18 is bigger than negative two, but 18 is not smaller than 16. So we can only choose the group of number that is overlap, which is this is the only group of number that is bigger than two, negative two, but smaller than 16. And how do you write this in interval notation? This is the easy interval notation, which is you open your bracket, you write a two, you comma, you write a 16, and you close your bracket up. So solving, hopefully you guys see that solving is a little bit doable, a little bit easy, because you just want to get rid of everything from the center. You have to do on the left, you have to do on the right. And again, graphing is, one thing I want to point out that 99% of the time, your graph for a, a, an N look like this. They will always go toward each other. The only overlapping item is in between here. And this is your interval notation for the N, okay? The other one is the, um, is the empty set, but we, we won't mention that for now, okay? Uh, let's try another one. What's this problem here? All right, if you don't have question, let's try another one. Let's do our B. And if you look at B, this is the B problem, which is 28 less than 
2 tom 2x minus 14 less than 48. So look at this item here. Look at this item here. The first thing, hopefully you got recognized, you say, oh, Mr. Tran, we have a parenthesis. And you are correct. We do have a parenthesis. To get rid of the parenthesis, we know that we need to distributive the two in. And if I distributive the two in, this is my new problem, which is after I get rid of my parenthesis, I convert this problem back to the A problem, which is two times two will give me four X two times negative 14 to give me negative 28, less than uh, uh, 48. Everybody see that two times two is four and two times 14 is 28, agree? Again, I haven't done anything new. I just get rid of the parenthesis and to get rid of the parenthesis, I need to distribute the number in. And now box yourself, right? Well, not box yourself, but that is what we want to get rid of. We don't want to get rid of anything else except the thing in that box. And to get rid of the thing in that box, do you agree that I need to get rid of the 28? And to get rid of the 28, I need to add the 28 because negative 28 and positive 28, they cancel out. And if I add 28 on the left, well, in the center, I need to add on the left and I need to add on the, on the right, which in this case, Everything is the same. I haven't changed the 4x. I haven't changed my inequality. And look at this thing here, hopefully a smooth selling because look at this item, I need to add this to get me 52. Sorry, 56. Do what I do, not what I say, right? 56. And you add this thing here, you get 76. Agree? And how do I get rid of the four here? Well, to get rid of four, I need to divide. And if I divide four on the left, I need to divide four on the, on the right. And in term of this thing here, the four cancel out. I have just a simple X in the middle, which is I complete my goal. My goal is to get X by itself, X is by itself. And now what do I need to do? I need to divide. 56 divided by four or four going to 56 to give me um, 14. And four going to uh, four going to 76 will give me 19. Right? 19. So we got this item, right? We're looking for an X. We're looking for a number that is bigger than 14, but less than 19. So what are those group of number? Well, four small number, which is 14 will be on my left and 19 will be my big number. 19 will be on my right, which is, do you agree this group of number? This group of number between 14 and 19, those are the group of number that is bigger than 14, but less than 19. And at the end point, you can see at the end point, we're just using a parenthesis, okay? So this group of number is the number that is bigger than 14, but smaller than 19. And how do you write this in interval notation? Hopefully you guys see that all we need to do is take the parenthesis in your graph and put the number on the inside which is 14 comma 19, open parenthesis here and close the parenthesis here. So question of how to write the interval notation, how to graph and how to solve. Just solve, graph, interval notation. Any questions so far with this B? Any question, ladies and gentlemen? So if you don't have question, let's take a look at C. And C, this is what we have is zero less than five open parenthesis, three X minus six, close the parenthesis, less than equal to 45. Right? So let me delete this. 
So look at this in here as the same as before. All we need to do is we need to distributive the phi in, distributive the phi in. And if I distributive the phi in, which is I have still have zero less than or equal to, and this is less than, and this is less than or equal to, phi times three will give me 15 x, and phi times six to give me negative 30. And hopefully you guys see that, oh, Mr. Tran, this is the same as before, which is our goal is we need to get the thing away from the center, get the thing away from this box. So again, just for me, you know, for now, you, you want to box it so that you remind yourself that you want to get rid of this, this item. You know, you know, after you do a lot and consistently doing the same, then you got it. You don't need to box and remind yourself. Uh, and, and the reason why I, I, I box it, because a lot of students, what they do is they, they move in the zero or move in the 45 to the zero. We will never move in the, the, the two items on the side. We only move the center away, okay? So make sure to, to remind yourself that we need to get rid of the thing inside the box. And to get rid of that, I need to add 30. And if I add 30 on one side, I need to add 30 on the other side which is my new problem right now will give me 30, less than 15 X, less than equal to 75, because this 30 and this 30 disappear. And now how do I get rid of the 15? To get rid of the 15, I need to divide by 15. And if I divide by 15 on one side, I need to divide by 15 to the, to the other side, which this will give me this cancel out, this will give me X. That's what I want. I want my X by itself, which give me, this is two. And this thing will give me uh, seven. No, not seven. Five. Uh, five, right? 15 go into seven five or seven five divided by 15 will give me five. So we solve, we got it. We got X equal or X is by itself. So looking at this item, we know that we have a negative, not a negative, a two and a five. And we know that most of the time, like I mentioned, most of the time your interval notation will be like this, not your interval notation, your graph will be like that. At two, do you agree that at two, we're using a parenthesis and at five, we're using a bracket, right? Make sure that this right here, because there's a line, we're using a bracket. They don't have a line, we use a parenthesis. And in this case, we have, again, how is your interval notation look like? We just basically take your graph down. We have a parenthesis, put it to comma a five. So solve, get X by itself, we got it. Graph, put your small number to the left and your bigger number to the right, we got this your interval notation, put them in your bracket and parenthesis or separate by a comma. So question here, question with how I got to this three here, graphing and interval notation. Let's do the hardest one. Let's do the hardest one, which is D. So if you don't have the question for C, D is, it's not really hard, but you know, small thing you have to remember. And, and that's what math is, right? Small rule here and there that you have to remember. So D, we have this, which is negative eight, less than negative eight X minus three thirty two less than 16. So there is no parenthesis that we need to get rid of. There is nothing that we need to do. All we need to do is whatever in the center, whatever in the center, we need to get rid of. And we don't move, don't ever move the negative eight and the 16, right? Your negative eight, your 16, stay where it at. You only move this item right here. Your goal is you move this item to the left and also to the right, okay? So what do I need to move first? Well, hopefully you guys see that we need to move the 32. And to move the 32, we need to add 
32. And if I add 32 in the center, I need to add 32 to the left, add 32 to the right. And in this case, let me clear. And looking at this item here, do you agree that this 32 disappear? My center, I have a negative AX. Right? So a negative 32 minus 8, that will give me 24. Positive 24. And 16 plus 32, that will give me 40, 48. And now, ladies and gentlemen, do you agree that I need to divide by a negative eight? And I emphasize this, right? We divide by a negative eight. And because we divide by a negative eight, we need to, your inequality, reminder, your inequality need to switch the direction. Because we divide by a negative eight to the left and divide by a negative eight to the right, your inequality, everybody see that is greater than, right? Less than right now is become greater than. And again, less than become greater than. So again, we need to, you guys need to remember that to divide by a negative number, when you divide by a negative number, your inequality need to switch the direction, which is in this case, a negative go into a positive. This thing would give me a negative three, a negative going positive. This thing would give me a negative six. And here come ladies and gentlemen, here come a biggest mistake a lot of people do. Let me ask you between a negative three and a negative six, which one is a smaller number? Negative three or negative six? Then, guy. Yeah, again, which one is negative negative three bigger or negative six bigger? Hopefully, you guys see that negative three is bigger, right? So again, a smaller number. The bigger the negative, the smaller the value. So you have to identify a smaller number to the left, which is in this case the negative six is on your left and a positive or not the positive, a negative three is on your right. A careless mistake a lot of people do, a careless mistake a lot of people do is they put a negative three on the right and negative six on the, um, the negative three on the left and negative six on the right, okay? But again, if you do this thing here, we can see, you can see that this is the group of number that we have. This is your graph which is this group of number is the number bigger than bigger than negative six, but smaller than three. And one thing a lot of students ask me is, how do you read this item? So this is what I tell my student is, when you want to read this item, whenever you want to read your, your, your inequality, you always want to read your X first. Do not keep on reading from left to right, read your X first. So if you read your X first, and let me erase this thing here. Do you agree that if you read your X first, this is tell you that I'm looking for X that is greater than, meaning bigger than negative six. What number is bigger than negative six? Well, bigger than negative six is over on the, on the right of six, okay? And also if we were to, this is what I have earlier, negative three, uh, negative three, if I were to erase this item here and you read your X first, X is less than, again, right now this tells you that negative three is bigger than X. Negative, negative three is greater than X. It's the same as X is less than negative three. So you always want to read your X first. Don't read from left to right because if you read from left to right, it might confuse you, right? This is X less than negative three, which is what number is less than negative three, which is anything to the left of negative three. So in this case, this is what we have. And our interval notation, this, the interval notation, we, we have open parenthesis, negative six, close to parenthesis at negative three, right? And again, why am I using parentheses? Because they don't have an equal sign in my inequality, okay? And, and again, the only reason a lot of students dislike the inequality is they have those 
actual rule, right? Uh, with the equal sign, we use a bracket, and then when you divide, this is where this is where you have to remind her when you divide by a negative number, your inequality have to change the direction. You have to ask yourself or somehow write a note, somehow remind yourself that that is what you need to. You do not change the direction because the answer is negative. You change the direction because you divide by a negative, okay? So question with this problem, this full problem of the compound inequality uh, in the sense of um, the n. All right, if you don't have question, let's take a look at the last item we have. So the last item we have is the word all. And if you did the homework, um, if you did the homework, you see that the word all, they tell you that whenever they have the word all, which is the union. And the union, this is what I tell my student is whenever they ask you for the word all, all you do is you combine them together and give it to them, okay? So the word all is basically this or that. So it doesn't matter which one, as long as one of them fit the description, then you give it to them, which is you give them that answer. So one thing is when they ask you for the union, which is they will ask you a, in a little bit, or I should go over that before I go over the, the confident interval, or not confident interval, but the inequality. But whenever they ask you for the union, all you need to do is combine the two items together. Last time, the intersection we're looking for is in between A and B. If they ask you for A union B, if they ask you for A union B, all you need to do is add whatever in A, put that together with whatever in B, okay? That's what the union is. So let me skip a, a few slides here. Uh, we will do this in a little bit later, but let me go over this thing here first, and then you know, we will do the interval notation, or not interval notation, but we will do a uh, inequality uh, tomorrow. Uh, but look at this thing here. If you did the homework on chapter nine, you probably saw something in this nature. So instead of ask you to do all of the calculation, instead of ask you to do all of the calculation, this is what they ask you to do, is they will give you some item. They will say, okay, I have a set A, which is, again, this is just a name of the item you have so that when they ask you down here. So they say we have a set A and this here, when you read this item, this is what you read or how you were to read it ladies and gentlemen. We are looking for an X. What is this X? Well, the X that we're looking for is a even integer. So everybody see the even integer, the even integer is basically, is basically two, four, six, eight, ten and so on and so forth until infinity, right? Positive integer, right? And this thing here, they say for set B, we're looking for an X. And this X is, this X is a odd integer. And an odd integer, which is basically one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, and so on and so forth until positive infinity. Okay, and again, part C, they basically say, okay, my C, I have this number, one, three, four, six, seven, nine, ten, and D, I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So basically, each of them contains some number. A and B, instead of write a number, they just write the description. And later on, when you get to 120, we say that this is a set builder notation. It just basically tell you the description that they want, which is the even integer, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, so on, so forth. And the odd integer is one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, so on and so forth. Okay. So let's take a look at this item here, which which is they ask you to find the two item that they ask you is the intersection. Remember, we went over the word and and the union, we went over the word or. So this is the notation and the, instead of tell you to find the math, they ask you if I give you this item, 
can you give me the intersection between A and B? Okay, and not B, C. Basically, they ask you, what does A have in common with C? Meaning, what number do they overlap? Do you agree that this number, 4, 6, 10, those number is inside C and also inside, also inside A. So that is what they ask you when they write it this way, when they wrote this item, it's basically tell, they tell you is find me, find me an item. And you have to, you know, to be precise, you have to put in a bracket. So basically they tell you find me an item that belong inside my A item and inside my C item. What does A and C have in common? What does the intersection of A and C, or what is the, what is the uh, overlapping? Which is, do you see that the overlapping, the two overlap, the two share four, six, and 10. So that's what the intersection asks you to do, is basically looking at the two number or looking at the two letter that they give you, give me what they have in, in common, okay? And similarly, similarly for part for B, they ask you C and D. So again, if C and D, we don't care about A and B, right? If it's C and D, we just look at C and D. We don't care about A and B. So C and D, what do they ask us? Well, they ask us, do A, um, not A, do C and D, does or do they have anything in common? Do you agree that they have this in common? They have a three? They have a four, they have a six, they have a seven, right? Four, six, seven, and three are inside both. Again, the intersection is basically tell you that what is inside both A, or in this case, inside both D, and also in C. So the answer we're looking for is three comma four comma six comma seven close your bracket up. So that is what we have in terms of the intersection, in terms of the word and, is what does the two item, what does both item share, okay? And what is the difference between the intersection versus the union? The union, this is all they ask you to do is take whatever in C, Okay, in short, let me give you the short version of this item. Basically, they tell you take whatever in C. Do you agree that in C, I have one comma, three comma, four comma, six comma, seven comma, nine comma, 10 comma. Take whatever in C and add it together. Unite them. Add them together with whatever in D, okay? So that's what they ask you to do in terms of the, of the union is take whatever in C and add it together with whatever in, uh, I cannot change it only. Um, everybody see that this group of number out here, the first group of number that I did not highlight, those are the item in C. Those are item in C right here, which is the one, the one, the four, the one, the three, the four, the seven, the nine, and the 10. Those are my C. They tell me, take whatever in C, I don't care as long as it's in C, put that together with whatever in D, which is the second item that I have right here. This is my D item. So one thing is the upside down U. You know, if you look at the, the, the common, common term, uh, common term, the upside down U right here is basically tell you what does the two item we have, what do they share? What do they have in common? The right side U is basically tell you to combine them together. Whatever you have the first item, combine them with the second item, but you don't need to repeat them. So again, on, on Connect Math, they might ask you to, uh, not Connect Math, my, my Math Lab, they might ask you to do this, which is you have to put them in order. Uh, they might, they might not. And you do not repeat the number. 
So as you can see, I have put this two together. I have, if I put this two together, I have one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is I just combine them together. And that's what the union tell us to do. The union unite them, combine them. The intersection, what do they share? What do they overlap? What do they have in common? Okay. So this is the two things that, that is a little bit, uh, a little bit different from, from your usual math. Uh, this is a critical thinking uh, math, which is 120. Um, we deal with that a, more in 120. Uh, but let's uh, question here, question with this particular problem. Well, if you don't have 